Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kaustub Orki. I am the product manager for service virtualization here at Broadcom. This presentation is about the playlist that we are publishing on YouTube related to service virtualization for developers toolkit. This last week, we released service virtualization version 10.5. As a part of that, we are very excited to provide you with all new features that go towards developer adoption. Right? You've been getting this question from our customers over the past year or so, how can I enable my developers? Of course, this is all a part of shift left testing. Right? So how can I enable my developers to use service virtualization? So the course agenda is why service virtualization for developers? Right? That's the obvious question. I'll, I'll answer that question. Then we'll look at all the tools that we're providing as a part of the toolkit, namely the Eclipse plugin, SVS code, using the SV10.4 APIs, then the enhanced APIs that we have in 10.5, the Jenkins plugin, code SV, and then integrating with CICD pipeline. And then I'll close off this uh, presentation with the closing thoughts. So why service virtualization for developers? It's as we are seeing with almost every customer, right? The classic COE is going away and making way for a federated agile team, right? So developers and software developers in test would like to leverage service virtualization for their dependencies. And the most important part is they want to use their own IDE. Right? They do not want to get into any other IDE because they want to create the virtual services against their dependencies, um, do their unit testing, and move on. Right? For that, the common trend is they do not want any other UI. Right? That's why the text there, which says to so their own Java IDEs as well as using APIs. Right? So what's the solution? Right? So again, you've asked, our customers have asked, and we have responded. So we have the SV for Developers Toolkit that I'm presenting right now, and the YouTube playlist follows. Now developers can, from their own Java IDEs, create and manage virtual services. That's big, right? In addition to that, the formats that we are supporting is not only our proprietary format, which is a MAR file, but also all industry well-known formats like RR pairs, Swagger, Vizil, Raml, Wardle, and so on. Right? Again, as I mentioned, this video is an intro to the playlist for service virtualization for developers toolkit. And those videos will give you in-depth information on how all these tools work. So moving forward, the first one is the Eclipse plugin. So again, this plugin is on the Eclipse marketplace. The link's there. You can go ahead and download the Eclipse plugin. Configure the plugin into your Eclipse ID. It's very straightforward. Just select install from the Eclipse marketplace, and it will configure the plugin in your Java IDE. Right. Create and update virtual services from RR pairs. That's the first use case. Right. If you have RR pairs, request response pairs, grab those and create virtual services. Once the virtual service is created, you also have the ability to update those virtual services. And not just from RR pairs, we also support creation and updation of virtual services from Swagger specs. And when we talk about Swagger, it's of course Swagger 2.0, right? And Swagger version 3, which is the open API, right? Also, you, you have the ability to create virtual services from our format, which is the MAR files. So you a virtual service was already created in the past, and you would like to use that for your unit testing. Feel free to take that MAR through the Eclipse plugin, Eclipse IDE, deploy it to the virtual service environment, and do your testing. Very simple. And we've made it more granular. You have the ability to specify SSL certs and so on for uh, HTTPS services, and also you get the ability to specify the ports. Right? Because the common trend we've seen among customers is that many teams have just a range of ports that they can use. And you cannot just deploy a virtual service randomly to any port. 
right? That's why we're giving you the ability to specify a port when creating a virtual service. Okay? So the advantage, again, here is that developers can create, deploy, and manage virtual services on the VSC directly from the Eclipse IDE. Right? Again, I would like to stress here that using this tool, which is the Eclipse plugin, you are able to do all these things directly from your Eclipse IDE. There is no need to go into the workstation or the portal. Moving on, the next one is called SVS Code. Obviously, it's service virtualization as code. You can download it from GitHub. Uh, very simple, straightforward for developers. You know, in your Maven project, use the POM file, add the dependencies. Again, you add the group ID, artifact version, and so on. Pretty straightforward. In a JUnit test, or in a unit test, write code to deploy virtual services to VSC. Right? So again, the assumption is that the, uh, you have some RR pairs, or you have a VSM, you have a VRS, which is a recording file, uh, or you have a MAR file, which is already created. Right? Use these different formats, create your virtual services directly through code. Again here, no need to go to the workstation or the portal right from your IDE. You could use Eclipse, you could use IntelliJ, or any other IDE that you use. From there, you have the ability to create and deploy virtual services directly on the VSC. Again, just as a side note, we use Java annotations here to uh, make use of creation of virtual service. Okay. So moving on, the next one is uh, APIs. So we've had APIs for the past eight to nine years. right? Now, the, what we have in 10.4, which is a prior version, is we give the ability to create and deploy a virtual service using RR pairs. Again, without going into the portal or workstation. Right? What it supported was RR pairs and MAR files. Also, you had the ability to manage VSCs, right? which is ability to report on a VSC. Okay, how long has been a VSC running? How many transactions have been on the virtual service uh, or virtual server environment? How many active VSCs and the usage of virtual services and VSCs? All this has been around. So what was missing was the ability to create virtual services from all the industry well-known formats. That's one. And the biggest thing is not only to create the virtual service, but also to augment an existing virtual service. Okay? So if we go through the use cases here, three primary use cases, creation of a virtual service supports Wisdom, Swagger, RAML, RR pairs, Wardle, MAR files. Again, similar to the Eclipse plugin, ability to provide SSL connections and also ability to provide a port when you deploy the virtual service. And the second most important one is to update an existing virtual service. If your virtual service is already up and running and you have more test data that you would like to augment to an existing virtual service, use that API call. Right? And the third one is download an existing virtual service by name. Let's say you know the VSC is called VSC Dev, and you have a virtual service called as My Bank Virtual Service or My Bank VS. Just give it a name and very simple, straightforward. Download the MAR file. Right. So three use cases. Again, and we've made it more granular for you so that you're able to provide more config parameters. Right. In terms of okay, if you're creating a virtual service, what's the name you'd like to give it? What's the description? What's the version? Well, version depends on you. Whatever you want to put in there, transport protocol. Right. You want to specify the type of the transport protocol. You want to specify what the base path is. Right. Sometimes it's, there's a base path after the host and port. Right. So you specify that. Whether it's SSL, you give that configuration details here. What port you want to deploy it on. Right? And the, of course, the data protocol, what kind of data protocol this is, right? JSON, XML, and so on. You have the ability to provide all that. So this is a groundbreaking API that we're providing our customers as a part of 10.5 release. The next one is Jenkins plugin. It's already available for the past one year on Jenkins.io Marketplace. Feel free to go there and download it if you've not still looked at it. It, of course, supports deploying and deploying virtual services, starting and stopping virtual services. In addition to that, if you're using our app test, you can also deploy tests and suites. Right? We give you the ability to level Jenkins parameters to parameterize build steps. Right? And also, not just from UI, 
we are also giving you the ability to configure and run the Jenkins plugin using Jenkins pipeline scripting. That's huge. And again, taking all this together, right? Taking all these together, all the tools that I've mentioned till now, right? These use cases help towards your CI CD pipeline. Right? The world is moving towards continuous testing, continuous delivery. Many customers are already using it. So many customers that I talk to are, are, are getting on that bandwagon. Right? So for the ICD pipeline, these are the use cases. Okay? And again, this is all based on the tools that I uh, have spoken in the last few minutes. Right? Creation of a virtual service on the fly. You know, support Swagger, RAML, Wardle, RRPS, MAR files. Pick those up, deploy to VSC. Again, that's, you can do that using APIs, you can do that using Eclipse plugin, SBS code, and so on, as I mentioned in the previous few minutes. You pull an existing virtual service from SCM. Let's say you already have a virtual service that's created. Go to your source control management, GitHub, or you know, whatever else you use, any other SCM that you're using. Pick it up, dynamically change the port, deploy to VSC. You can also create a virtual service from recording. Service from recording, right? That's the classic use case. And then, of course, you're using Jenkins that we've already shown on the previous slide. But again, if your choice of two CI tool is not Jenkins, let's say you're using Bamboo or anything else that you're using, feel free to use our REST APIs. All the APIs that I've covered till now, the ones that we had in version 10.4, and the one that we're providing in 10.5, feel free to use those to create virtual services, update virtual services, download virtual services. Those APIs are very powerful, and they're there for you to use. Right? So again, any CI tool, make use of our virtual services APIs that you provide. So having covered all these tools, right? I'd like to close this out by saying, with the release of 10.5, and we've released a toolkit. And what's a part of the toolkit? What's going to be on the YouTube playlist is all what I've covered over the last few slides, or the last few minutes. Right? These are all developer-friendly tools. You use those to create, manage, deploy virtual services. Many of those, as you saw, you can stay in your Java IDEs and create virtual services, deploy virtual services, manage virtual services, right? And again, if you're connected with us on the communities, if you're not, please do so. Uh, it's a CA community. Uh, this is the most developer-friendly release of service virtualization ever, right? Because we're giving you the ability, giving the power in the hands of the developers to work with service virtualization in terms of taking care of all their dependencies. Again. All this is as a part of the CICD pipeline as well as shift left testing or unit testing. Right? And the last comment I would like to say is this video is an intro to the playlist which is called Service Virtualization for Developers Toolkit. And that will take you through all these tools that I've mentioned using the videos. Right? So go ahead, give, give these a try, and please give us any feedback on those videos on the YouTube playlist. Thank you.